Today we're going to simulate what happens when a wolf spider bites you. I'm going to be adding wolf spider venom to human blood. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, if you've ever seen a wolf spider, it's no surprise why people are afraid of them. With fangs like those, a bite from a wolf spider is definitely going to be unpleasant. What I wanted to test was how potent is that bite, and also I kind of just want to see venom react with blood under a microscope. But in order to get venom in the first place, we're going to need a spider. The sun is still out, so our wolf spiders are going to be hiding underneath debris and leaves. And we don't just need any wolf spider, we need either a rabid wolf spider or a tigrosa wolf spider, which are two spiders big enough that I can actually work with in a lab setting. To find one of these guys, I'm going to have to flip over every rock, board, and brick that I can find in hopes of uncovering a massive spider. Oh crap, big spider! I had to get my container really quick. Okay, she's still there. Oh man, it's not the biggest I've seen, but it's a sizable Tigrosa wolf spider. Wait, whoop, whoop, whoop. he's on the run. There's a container there. Go, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, come on, come on. Yes, 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 that, oh, that is a beautiful, Big Tigrosa. Now we've got our spider. It's time to get our blood sample. We've got our blood sample. Now to get the venom. This is going to be challenging. Not super, super confident with forceps, so we'll see if we can get the spider with these. Okay. Oh, he's jumpy. Jumpy spider. Alright, let's get you out from the leaf litter. There. I don't like the way. I don't like the way these feel. I think. I think we're gonna have to use the hands. It's like, as this whole situation progresses I'm realizing I'm less and less in control of the situation and I'm putting the spider under a lot more stress than I originally planned all right come here okay okay okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Hold on. see if she will grip onto this can she grip that let's see am I nervous yeah, yeah, I'm nervous, but not, not really for my sake. I'm worried about the spider. If I make a wrong move, I could hurt or kill the spider. And that's really not what this video is about. This video, I'm, I'm trying to get the venom from the spider for scientific reasons. I don't want to unnecessarily stress out the animal. I don't want to unnecessarily injure the animal. So I'm stressed because the spider's stressed. And this makes the whole milking process all the more difficult. Wolf spider fangs are more like this. They come from the sides. And the problem with that is I can't just pin the animal on the edge of a vial or some kind of like collection device. I have to almost get it to bite the lip and hope that enough venom comes off that I can use it as a sample for the experiment. No, 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 no. I think it's important here to illustrate just how hard I'm trying to milk this spider. Uh, without super sophisticated equipment to sedate it with CO2 and then electroshock it to involuntarily release venom, um, I have to basically aggravate the spider to the point where it's biting and releasing venom. Before we even get into the microscopic part, the fact that it was this difficult to get anything out of the spider should show you just how little these spiders are out to get you. 
The fact that I had to put the spider through that much stress, which I feel really bad about, the fact that I had to go to such lengths to get it to bite is a testament to how non-aggressive these animals actually are, despite their formidable appearance. I'm really sorry about that. Let's go ahead and dump all this stuff out. I know, I know. All right, spider. I know, you're, you're not having a fun day. There you go. See ya. Thank you so much. To be completely honest, I wasn't 100% sure that I even got enough venom to see a reaction. This may be big as wolf spiders go, but in the grand scheme of spiders, it's not that big. So the venom output is not going to be that much. But once I looked under the microscope, I was shocked at what I saw. This is healthy human blood. You can make out the round, red shapes of blood cells. And there isn't too much coagulation going on. They're still moving fairly freely in the slide. Now, have a look at the venom sample and let me know in the comments below what you notice is different. My first observation is they're not red anymore. Now, this could still be due to this being a slightly older sample and maybe the hemoglobin, which is the protein that makes them red, may have denatured. But even the remaining healthy blood cells still have their main shape and hemoglobin also helps them to retain their shape. So something else is going on here. You can also see that there is some coagulation going on where the blood cells are binding together and forming clots. But if you look closely at some of the areas in this microscope slide, you can see where the blood cells have started to form weird shapes. My best understanding of what's going on right here is their cell membranes are breaking down, which does in fact confirm we actually got some venom in this sample. See, the way wolf spider venom works is essentially it turns the insides of the insects that they prey upon into goo. Well, this bug soup is essentially the contents of the insect cells that have been burst and turned into liquid. Now, if any of you are more well versed on microbiology and something else is going on here that has nothing to do with the venom, please let me know because I'm not exactly 100% sure here. But I find it absolutely fascinating that I'm seeing this kind of behavior of the blood cells under the microscope compared to the healthy sample after I've added some scrapings of wolf spider venom. Now, keep in mind, this is concentrated wolf spider venom in a very small sample of blood. If a wolf spider bites you, these effects are not going to be as severe unless you are allergic to the venom or something. Wolf spiders only use their bite as a form of last resort defense. And just like any other animal that can bite, sting, or scratch you, unless you're experienced in dealing with these kinds of animals, it's always safer to keep your distance in the wild. They may be fierce looking, but wolf spiders are an important part of the ecosystem and keep things like cockroaches and other nasty household pests at bay. In fact, I actually tested to see how aggressive these animals are, and if you want to see that video, click right here. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.